Good evening, folks. How are you doing? I am Scott. Once again, Bo is down at my feet. Today it's about 8.30 in the evening. Uh, Tuesday evening, I do believe. 14th day of June 2022. <laughs> it's nice down here in Tampa. Um, hmm. now, for those of you who didn't look at the previous video, I talked about a couple of changes taking place in the setup I have here. This is one. This is another. Uh, I hope it makes things a little easier for you to listen to. Uh, I know me and high def is not going to make things easier for you to watch, but <laughs> we all have our we all have our little punishments we have to fucking endure, don't we? Anyway, um, I was very surprised. Someone named Christian sent me an email. I've been communicating with this individual for quite some time. Decent person uh, sent me an email. And, and you ain't gonna believe this shit. Hang on a second. Let me get down here. Uh, boom. Nick Brenna from the People's Party uh, sent this to Christian. I have hopefully erased Christian's email address. But I've left the People's Party, Nick Branagh's, uh, Movement for People's Party. Uh, Got all kinds of colors in that. It's a sun with a bunch of people holding hands around it. Yay! A new day is dawning. Yay! Says Christian, I have some of the most thrilling news I've ever shared. Jimmy Dore is considering a run for president with the People's Party. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? This guy is so sleazy. Jimmy Dore is so sleazy. He made his money. He made his f money with the Young Turks for 10 years. 10 years working with those people. When Cenk Uygur was getting money from a Republican to run the fucking thing. He pushed the, the Bernie, Bernie Sanders fucking <laughs> sheepdog psyop, not once, but twice. And of course, Jimmy Dore helped bring into power people like, oh, I don't know, the entire squad and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, just to go from the Bronx. When people like myself knew it was obvious, even before the first fucking primary took place, that she was a fraud. She was a manufactured lefty. Not Jimmy Dore ran with it, promoted her, pushed her, helped get her elected, quote unquote. And now he looks back and goes, ooh, that was a mistake. You know what? Uh, I make mistakes all the time. I'm a terrible judge of character. Let me be your president. <laughs> We've been discussing it with him and Steph for several weeks, and he's talking about it on tour in his show. He would be the most popular comedian to ever run and the first person with his own show and a million subscribers. A Jimmy Dore campaign and presidency could revolutionize this country. Every time he's brought it up at the shows and the live chats have exploded with excitement. Let's show him what an incredible candidate we think he could make and how much support he would have. That is from Nick Brenna to Christian. <laughs> I won't give you Christian's last name. Not going to uh, dox him in that way. But sure enough, there it is. The Movement for People's Party with Nick Brenna. Woman's March at the Pentagon. Holy crap. What a fraud that was. I think Aunt Bibi went to that. Jesus Christ. What a fraud that was. How old is that picture? Anyway. This is their website. This is the front of their website for the Movement for People's Party. And there it is. Jimmy Dore is considering running for president. He could win. It's a dark time in America and getting worse. So... 
uh, what we need to do is hire pothead, college dropout, who sucked up to Cenk Uger for 10 years and helped get Acasio Cortez elected and put him in office. Not to mention, um, d- does this at all ring a bell? Is this a joke? We should have somebody who knows absolutely nothing about politics in politics just because he's popular? He has a fucking million people on his YouTube channel. Think about the possibilities, says Nick Brenner. Well, we've learned that lesson recently with a guy by the name of Zelensky. If you put vapid, selfish, amoral, greedy people, ignorant greedy people in office, whose only fucking marketable skill is that they are good in front of a camera, you put them in an office in the presidency, or a position of power, even though we know it's a puppet, but if you put them in a position of power, <laughs> look, you, you deserve what you get, boys and girls. Not to mention, Jimmy Dore could never run for fucking office. I've said before, he's doing all this because he either wants a evening gig for one of the major networks, uh, like a like a John Stewart kind of thing, or he wants to run for some office someplace. He wants to get that easy bucks, those easy dollars. He wants to be taken seriously and interviewed. Like he knows what he's talking about. And he doesn't. He doesn't. He has finally come to the understanding that the the squad were frauds. Some people, myself included, tried to tell people, even when they were running for the primaries, that they were frauds. And if you don't believe me, I got the videos and the articles to prove it. This guy promoted him. Promoted him. Here he is. All the time. I don't know how many times he's been saying, talking about himself as just a fucking pothead comedian or a pothead YouTuber. I don't know how many times. He's in some fucking, he's in some fucking short documentary. About some guy who just did smoke pot constantly for 30 days. That dude, the same guy who tried to make a name for himself by eating at McDonald's for nothing but McDonald's for 30 days. Turns out he lost weight. (laughs) He kept trying to act like it was death. It was a death sentence and he had to just keep struggling. He was fine. He lost weight (laughs) because he was eating plastic and fucking sawdust. But anyway, same guy did a fucking pothead thing of it. I don't care if somebody smokes weed. That's fine if somebody smokes weed. But you know, and again, I don't care about dropping out of college. I don't care about dropping out of college. Uh, I dropped out of college myself. And unlike Jimmy, I didn't go back at some point in time and get a fucking honorary degree from somebody in marketing communications. Marketing. Another another comedian. (coughs) A real political comedian. A guy by the name of Bill Hicks. used to do this bit where he'd say, how many people in the audience out here are into marketing? You do marketing and you get a smattered, yeah! And he'd go, great, now kill yourself. And they'd all laugh. He goes, N- no, I'm not, it's not the joke. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. There he is with that smirk that he got from some other comedian 
in vaudeville. You want to see what this guy, you ever seen his stand-up? Have you ever seen how bad his stand-up was? Watch a bit of this for a second. Just, just so you know why he's, he's doing what he's doing. I'm a loser, people. Oh, yeah, let's get that out of the way, you know, 30 seconds. Hey, he's not. The stats? What's it? I don't know why this fucking thing does that. I'm sorry. Bonsoir? Oh, yeah, he comes out in Canada and tries to do a bonsoir. And he doesn't get a laugh for it, so he just rolls on. Watch. Bonsoir! Look at that. I did it. Nothing. I love it being here in my... Montreal, everybody is so open-minded, right? I was doing a show last night, and afterwards this couple came up, and they asked me to sign a CD, and they were real nice. Is he nice. drunk? And I was like, hey, what do you guys do for fun around here besides the comedy? And they go, we're swingers. I was like, you mean... Wow. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> Humor. Wow. A swinger joke. He came out. He came out swinging in 2012, didn't he? Woo! That's some cutting edge shit right there, boys. A swinger joke. Oh God, Jesus! It gets worse. But they're polite. Um. Here's my thing. As bad as this idea is, and. As much as I, I, this detests me, the idea of him seriously considering this, um, like this, because especially because of this, Mr. Zelensky here, <laughs> um, as much as that detests, I, I'm detested by that. I have to tell you, it is not in any way, shape, or form legitimate. Nick Brenna uh, has come under fire. Now, again, this is Jordan Sheraton, and Jordan Sheraton's a piece of crap. And we know that. He's a total piece of crap. He had his own issue of uh, doing something with uh, an employee um, and making sexual advances towards an employee um they, they all do because they, you know, they're all from the same pool they're all from the jenk uger fucking young turks and it was just a despicable from what i understand it was just a despicable bunch of people all pretending to be something larpers they're just larpers <laughs> and that's how jimmy Dore made his money in this video so nick brenna was accused recently he was the head of this new party and in december of 2021 a female subordinate uh that he had a romantic relationship with made accusations of sexual harassment against him now who knows Branagh addressed it not Branagh. uh yeah Branagh addressed it at uh on his own fucking uh <laughs> Whatever the hell it is. Um, I don't know where it is. Here it is. He claims that this was part of a liberal takeover attempt. And they're trying to smear him. To bring him down. Because the party is so powerful. The party, the movement for a people's party has done absolutely nothing. It has had a couple conventions. They call them conventions. They did one in 2020. Um, they did one in 2020 with a number of people who showed up. Uh, Marianne Williamson was uh, featured prominently in the August 30th, 2020 convention. They said it was viewed by 400,000 people on various platforms. Marianne Williamson, how is that 
turned down. How is that fucking support aged, endorsement aged? How about Nina Turner? She was also there. Of course, Chris Hedges, Jimmy Dore, the usual suspects, Cornell West. <laughs> that was 2020. I think they did another one recently. Uh, where is the... Here we go. They did one where they want you to nominate people for 2022. Right? That was a thing. We're on the move. Nominations for 2022 People's Party. Help us find and elect a new kind of representation. Not even going to do their own fucking research. They want you to do it for them. Do you know what the front page article before that is? Right on the front page. Right under this. Anybody want to guess? It was to announce the upcoming People's Convention of 2020. That's how together, that's how fucking with it, this goddamn thing is. The movement for a People's Party is a fraud. It's a fraud. 100% fraud. There's Nina Turner. 100%. <laughs> Nick Branagh helped bring about the Bernie for President campaign, which was nothing more than let sheepdog the real progressives into the fucking presidential election process, and then, oh, we're going to hand them over to Hillary Clinton. Because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it was obvious if I can, to everybody in the world except Bernie Sanders that they stole the nomination from his supporters. And then he held... Hillary Clinton's hand aloft in the air. In the debates, he said famously, I don't want to hear about any more emails. <laughs> they trashed her in the, in the primary. And they rigged the election so Hillary would win. <laughs> and boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Bernie knew that. And so did... Nick Brennan, who, by the way, is a progressive speaker. You can hire him to do his progressive show at your next event. He does do bar mitzvahs. Let me show you. Did I show you this? No. Let me show you this. Aside from being a horrible fucking comedian... I mean, he does better than I would do. But he's not a good comedian. He's not Carlin. He's not Hicks. That's why he's doing what he's doing. <laughs> he's talking about this in this video. This is an old video. Talking about the midterm results back when he was pushing fucking, oh, I don't know. Alexandria Casio Cortez just go from the Bronx. Have a listen to how proud he is that he was one of the first to have her on. So that leaves two. Only two of them were actually opposed by the party and unseated establishment Democrats in the primaries. Alexandria Casio Cortez, who we had on the show before anybody else had her on their, their show. Before anybody else had her on their shows. I'm so fair. Everybody's following my lead. I'm the greatest. I'm the best. Everybody had her on. I had her on first. Hey, Bo Bo. <laughs> you proud of that, Jimmy? How proud are you of that right now? How Honestly, how proud are you of that right now? You helped lead other people to have that fraud on your show when it was such an obvious thing that she was a fraud even back then. And Anya Presley, hmm, okay. bet you're proud of that one, huh? <laughs> How can somebody, oh, I want to show you something else, too, this guy. Uh, just so you know, too, I forget the guy's name, uh, but the election, the midterm election, and uh, 
you know, movement. There's a movement for a people's party, right? Which is the. Uh, oh, I don't know where he is. God they'll be it. in Austin Saturday, right? That's right. Saturday night, November 10th. Tickets still available. Romplicone.com. Romplicone. That's the guy who I think uh, really is. Is, is it Placone or the other guy? It's one of these two guys. One of these guys. I think it's Ron. I think it's Ron. Don't hold me to it, but it was. It, I think it's that guy. There, there are two guys, and of course, Steph. Obviously, Steph, who helped make Jimmy Dore who he is. Because Jimmy used to do these things where he would run around and do these shows. And is it Ron? God, I think it's Ron. Or who was the other guy? Maybe it's Ron. I don't know who it is. <laughs> it's one of these guys. He used to have these. He, he used to have a, Ron Pacone, and it's either Ron Pacone or somebody else. And they used to do this fucking thing where they would go back and forth and joke and do all these things. I don't know if it's him or the other guy. But now the other guy has just, either Ron or the other guy, has just gone off. He has just become this vax dude. I don't think it's Ron Pacone. It must be the other guy. He has just become this vax dude. He just and he hates Jimmy Dore. <laughs> he hates Jimmy Dore because Jimmy Dore talks bad about fucking the Rona thing <laughs> and questions the Rona thing. But this guy, whoever he is, it's not Ron Pacone. It's the other guy, and I, I can't remember his name. I'm very sorry. I can't remember his name. <laughs> but he just he he hates. Jimmy Dore so much. And they had a, a thing where they went back and forth and back and forth, and it was just horrible to watch. Um, but maybe part of the problem is, you know, he helped build and make Jimmy Dore into what he was. <laughs> and you watch his, the, the, the shows they used to do, going around with a laptop and a projector for the laptop and a fucking pull-down screen, <laughs> and they would just, he would drink behind a podium. And, of course... Steph and the other two people, whoever else was there, Ron Placone and maybe the other guy, I forget his name, uh, the guy who hates him now, would sit there and they would make jokes about what was going on in the news that day. It was like um, uh, 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 John fucking <laughs> Stewart show, uh, but a live John Stewart show. But if you ever watch them, you'll, you'll notice that the funniest person there is, is not Jimmy Dore. Not even close. Because this is Jimmy Dore. And maybe they're mad at him. <laughs> because they're living in fucking apartments and Jimmy Dore is living in a multi-million dollar mansion. Nick Branagh knows that his party... I think is on the ballot, maybe, or got on the ballot in 2020 successfully in three states. They have very little support. They have very few members. Uh, and Nick Brenner is looking for another <laughs> another Pied Piper to bring the real left back under the fucking Democratic Party banner for yet another election. That's all he did for Bernie Sanders. He knew it was a fraudulent campaign. He knew in the end when push came to shove and the reality of the theft of his nomination would become obvious to all he knew the campaign would do nothing about it because that was the whole purpose of the campaign from the start. They did it in 2016, and then he did it again with him in 2000, or they asked him to come on, He's according to him, in 2020. And now, <laughs> he's got himself a Zelensky. His own private Zelensky. College dropout, made a pothead, uh, buddy of Jenk Uger, 
who's by, by, is not a popular individual by any stretch of the imagination. And he was partners with him, worked with him, made his real money with him, became somebody in this fucking industry with him, because of him, for 10 fucking years. This guy brought you, helped bring you Casio Cortez and all the rest of the members of the Fraud Squad. And then he turned around and shook his little crooked finger at the Fraud Squad and said, you're frauds. Well, yeah, we've all known that since before they were, they won the nomination, Jimmy. You didn't? That's why you should be president. Jimmy Dore knows he can't be president. Jimmy Dore will probably not even fucking accept the nomination from the Movement for People's Party because he knows what a fraud it will be. If he does, he's even more fucking vapid and self-absorbed and greedy than I thought he was to start with because it would be an obvious fraud of a campaign <laughs> and he should be the first person in the world to tell you he should be the last person in the world elected to office he does not do research he does not read he does not fucking understand he does not comprehend he repeats what people say that he hears or more likely that his staff hears and does the research for us says, oh, this guy had this interesting take. Maybe you should pick this up. Okay. He's like a comedian. He's like that Carlos guy. Whatever his name is, Carlos something. He's like that comedian who's just known for taking other comedians' fucking jokes and stealing them and putting kind of a Latin American twist on them. That's it. That's what he does. He just does that with political takes. He's also, and this will tell you, this right now, that this will tell you um, just how <laughs> bad a judge of character this guy is. He's now part of the whole Max Blumenthal thing. So, of course, Nick Branagh, seeing that and knowing that, and Nick Branagh being the guy he is, wants to be the head of a party. Because he, th he thinks in his mind that that's power, he thinks in his mind that that's money and that's access. Eventually, if they get enough people in the party and they have, they can actually make a dent, they can sway. They can sway people to go Republican, they sway people to go Democrat, they can sway, then money will have to come to them and pay them to sway the people one way or the other. That's all he's doing. That's all Nick Branagh's doing. He wants to be relevant again. <laughs> he was relevant once with the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2016, and he squandered it. He let them talk him into doing that, and he squandered it. That wrecked his fucking career, because everyone knows what it was, even if he doesn't want to admit it. So now, he's going to run a pothead, college dropout, former jink. Uger employee who couldn't tell you from the word go that I wouldn't waste one single vote on just a girl from the Bronx. And now he's running for president. Or he's, they want to run him for president. I don't know, maybe. Shit, man. If he can get that guy uh, Kolomoisky, maybe you should call Kolomoisky. Kolomoisky made fucking Zelensky. Maybe he can call Kolomoisky and show him some of his fucking, his, his, his reels, some of his, uh, his stand-up stuff and say, hey, did a good job over in Ukraine. Maybe you could fucking back me and, and here in the United States. I'm your guy. But we'll see. Anyway, now it's about 9 o'clock. Just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, Christian sent me that over, and I said, holy shit, I, I can't believe that. But there you have it. I, it. Nothing surprises me anymore in the political sphere of the United States of America. Nothing. 
nothing. Donald Trump ran and won. Anything's possible, I guess. Hillary Clinton ran again and almost won. If it wasn't for those damn Ruskies. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you very much.